Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to explain how to create straight hair. Before we get going, I want to mention that on my website I have a written version of this tutorial, and that blog will have the reference photo that I used. Well, let's get started. Here is the reference photo that I'm using. Print the reference photo onto plain copier paper. Flip it over and coat the back with graphite. Then secure the paper to the board, graphite side down. Afterwards, trace over the image. I did not record this step, so I'm using footage from another project. This is how my trace lines look. I traced the general shape of the hair, also the location of dark shadows and major sections of hair. I also traced some of the pale highlights. I am burning on watercolor paper. I keep a piece of it nearby to test the pen tip heat and to blot the pen tip. Also, I keep the reference photo nearby. If you are burning on wood, your setup should be similar. Just keep a piece of scrap wood nearby instead of paper. Begin by using the shader of your choice and burn along the trace lines. The lines represent the location of the pale highlights. We are burning around those highlights to help them stand out. Our main goal right now is to burn over or around the trace lines so that the pencil marks can be erased. I am using Colwood's J shader. I use the flat of the shader where I can because it produces a wide burn stroke. Along the sides of the hair, I tend to use the edge of the shader because the locks or sections of hair are thinner. My burn strokes are long, and more importantly, they follow the curve of the hair. Don't worry if the burn strokes are not uniform in color. That's okay. In fact, it's okay if a single burn stroke varies in color. If anything, the color variation will help with the realism of the hair. Along the right temple, I am burning a series of thin lines. The lines represent the small portion of the hairline that is visible. I use the edge of the shader as I burn to get really thin lines. Lastly, I add a series of short lines along the bottom of the hair. Once the trace lines are burned in, rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove the graphite. Here's how the hair looks so far. We will begin with the right side. This side is in shadows, so it's a bit darker than the left. Also, there is a cast shadow along the top of this hair section. There are a number of pale highlights in the area, and you can see a bit of the hairline along the right side of the face. There are a few stray hairs sticking out along the back of the head. I'm going to break down the side of the hair into three sections. The first is the front, including that hairline. The second will be the middle, that includes the majority of the highlights. And the third will be the back part of the hair. Begin with the back section where the hair is the darkest. Fill in the section with long, wide burn strokes. I'm using uniform strokes as my burn method, but the color does not need to be perfectly uniform. I mentioned before that this side of the hair is in shadows, so we don't see as much detail as we can see on the rest of the hair. Also, the further back from the face we get, the less detail we see. So don't add a lot of burn strokes in here. Keep it pretty basic. At the bottom of the hair, burn a series of thin lines that vary in length. This will give the hair a tapered edge. Then finish burning in this section of hair. And as you can see, the color does not need to be uniform. Now let's work on the front edge of the hair. Begin with the dark triangular shaped section of hair. I'm incorporating a bit of texture into this section. I do this by burning a series of thin, short lines, working small areas at a time. These lines will not only add some subtle texture, but they will also add a little tonal variety. With the frontmost section, burn it to a light tan color. 
Then add a couple of thin, slightly darker lines to break up the section. Burn some thin lines on the hairline. Make sure the lines follow the curve of the face. Darken up the root area on both the front and middle sections of hair. Then define the edges of the middle section. Also, burn a series of thin lines along the bottom of the hair. The lower edge of the hair is lighter in color than the top, so make sure to keep your burn strokes in the tan range. With the middle section, burn it to a tan color and then add some darker thin lines to break up the section. Finish darkening up the root area in this section. Then create a couple of pale highlights in the area. To create a pale highlight, burn a thin dark line along the outer edges of where the highlight should be. Afterwards, extend the darker color a little ways. Afterwards, burn over the highlight, making it a tan color. Repeat this process to create as many or as few of highlights as you want. Once the basics of the hair structure are blocked in, then re-burn over the area to further define highlights and darken the hair. Use the same techniques for this that you use to block in the hair. An ink pen eraser, which is also called a sand eraser, can be used to lighten up burn strokes that got too dark. Afterwards, the hair will probably need to be touched up in places. For example, you might need to redefine a pale highlight. Lastly, there are a few stray hairs that stick out. To create them, use the razor edge of the shader to burn really thin lines in the area. Now we will work on the left side of the hair. There are a number of pale highlights that are visible, and we can see the location where the sun is striking the hair. This is the overall palest area on the hair. The top right side of the hair is darker than the rest of the hair on the left side. Also, there are a number of sections of hair. I'm not going to number them like I did with the right side, though. Lastly, there are a number of shadows, or darker sections of hair. These shadows are often what I use to mark the boundaries of the different sections of hair. I'm beginning with the triangular section of hair on the top of the head. I'm using the flat of the shader to burn wide burn strokes that vary slightly in color. The color variation will create the impression of individual locks of hair within the triangular section. I start the burn strokes on the right side of the section where the color is darkest. Then I pull the pin tip towards the left where the color is lighter in value. I mark the boundaries of a hair section by burning a thin, darker line along the outer edge of the section using the razor edge of the shader. The line will become part of the shadows on the hair adjacent to the section. Not only do I vary the color of my burn strokes, but I also vary their width. More importantly, the burn strokes follow the direction that the hair is styled. Because my burner is set to produce a medium to dark tan burn result, it takes a fair amount of burning and reburning to fill a section of hair with color and texture. I will warn you now that I tend to bounce around a bit as I'm burning. The main reason for this is that I like to work on the darker areas of the hair first. I do this because they stand out more, and that makes it easier to compare my artwork with the reference photo. When I compare my art with the reference photo, I am mainly comparing the color and the direction that the hair is laying. I am not concerned with replicating every feature on the reference photo. After all, the hair is not the focal point in portrait artwork. The face is the focal point, and the hair just frames the focal point. For portraits, there are just three things you need with the hair. One, the basic shape of the hair. Two, the basic color. And three, texture and details near the face. 
the further from the face you are, the less detail that is actually needed. Decreasing the amount of detail as you get further away from the face will do two things. One, it will help keep emphasis on the face. And two, it will help give the portrait depth. That helps create a 3D appearance. I'm starting to work on this section of hair that curves to the left, the comb over as I call it. I start the burn stroke in the shadowed root area, where the color is darkest. Then I pull the pen tip downward slightly and then angle it towards the left following the curve of the hair. Afterwards, I return to the back section of hair and did more work on it. I like to block in a section of hair and then work on a different section of hair. I eventually return to the original section of hair I started out with. Each time I rework a section of hair, I further define the edges of the section, darken the shadows, define the edges of any pale highlights, and darken the overall color in the section. As I said before, I do a lot of reburning to build up the color and texture on the hair. Let's recap the basic process to creating hair. First, break it down into sections. Work a section at a time. Define the boundaries of a section by burning a thin, darker line along the outer edges of it. Fill the section with burn strokes that vary in color and width. This will create the impression of smaller locks of hair within that section of hair. Burn in the direction that the hair is styled. And lastly, create some smaller, clearly defined locks of hair. To create a clearly defined lock of hair, begin by burning a thin, darker line on the outer edge of the lock. Then burn over the lock to give it color. And lastly, Darken up the hair adjacent to the lock so that it will stand out. The edges of the triangular section of hair are clearly defined. Along the left end of this section, I'm burning a series of thin lines that vary in color. The purpose of the lines are to create a tapered edge so that the end of the triangular section blends in with the rest of the hair. Afterwards, I added thin, darker lines on the hair I had already blocked in so that the texture matched that I just created. Then I resumed working on the triangular section by using the flat of the shader to create long bands of color that varied in width and color. Once the triangular section was blocked in, I returned to the comb over section of hair. This section of hair is much closer to the face, so it needs more detail than the triangular section or the back of the hair does. My method for adding more detail is to create more clearly defined locks of hair. Some of the locks of hair will be pale highlights, but most of them will be in the medium to dark blonde color range. Another thing I do to increase the amount of detail is to incorporate more tonal variety on the hair. The hair closest to the face should have the most tonal variety. Slowly decrease that tonal variety the further from the face you get. This will help push the back area of the hair further into the background, giving the artwork visual depth. Another way of putting that, it will give the artwork a better 3D appearance. If needed, you can restore or create pale locks of hair by using the edge of a sharp knife to gently scrape away the color where a lock is desired. Use a pencil to draw around the edges of where the light is striking the hair. Once the area is marked, then reburn over the hair above the pencil line to darken it up. It only needs to be a couple of shades darker. Now block in the hair on the side of the head. As you work, keep the hair within the boundaries of the pencil marks lighter than the adjacent hair. What I tend to do is block in the hair following the same guidelines we've been using, 
Then I reburn over the hair above and below the pencil marks to darken it up. You may have noticed that I both pull and push the pen tip. Pulling the pen tip means that I'm pulling the pen tip down towards myself or pulling it down towards the bottom of the hair. Pushing the pen tip means that I'm pushing the pen tip up and away from myself or pushing it up towards the top of the head. I do this because it creates more tonal variety due to the changes in hand pressure. When pulling the pen tip downward, I tend to use a lighter hand pressure than I do when pushing it upward. It's not a huge pressure difference between the two directions, but it is just enough to create a slight tonal change, especially when pushing it upwards. A bit of advice I can give you that applies to all pyography artwork is to take your time. Rushing to get the job done does not produce the best results. For reference, the hair that I am working on measures a mere two and a half inches square, and it took me over two and a half hours to create it. There are several locks of hair that lay on top of the adjacent tear. Carefully avoid burning over those locks when working on the hair surrounding them. I suppose you could restore and or create the locks after the surrounding hair has been burned in by scraping them into existence with the edge of a sharp knife. I find that it saves time if you just avoid burning over them to begin with. It is important to remember that my tutorials explain how I created the artwork. That does not mean it is the only way or that it is even the best way to do things. With that said, I recommend that you incorporate aspects that work for you and ignore the rest. I mentioned before that the closer to the face you are working, the more detail the hair should have. On the front part of the hair, which I consider to be the comb over, I have created more contrast which means there is a larger tonal difference between the light and darker burn strokes. I have also incorporated more tonal variety, and I've created more clearly defined locks of hair. Plus, I increased the number of the thin, darker lines burned in the area. These things combined together create the increased detail that the hair closer to the face needs. Starting at the triangular section of hair, the amount of detail has been reduced, and this pushes the area further into the background. That helps give the hair a 3D appearance. Rub a pencil eraser over the area to remove the graphite. And lastly, if needed, switch to a sand eraser, which is also called an ink pen eraser, and gently rub over the reflected light on the hair. This is done to remove a little color. Here's how the hair looked once I was completely done. That is it for this tutorial. I hope the information was helpful. As I said before, on my website, Pyography Made Easy, I do have a written version of the tutorial, and it has the reference photo. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.